All right. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. This is um, part three of the construction education series put on by SolidCAD. And I just keep closing off my screen that I can't see it. Oh, okay, here I am. So I'm Andrew Cole. And if we go forward to the next screen, this session is all about plan grid. So we've done assemble system, we've done building connected, and now we're on to plan grid. Uh, it may be the last, but it may be the best. We'll see. Luke here is along with me again today. He's the technical solutions executive with Autodesk. Luke's um, started with plan grid, but uh, before joining Autodesk, but he's also used it in the field uh, as a project manager. So uh, certainly a lot of experience in Plan Grid. I think it's gonna be a really great session today. As always, everyone is in a uh, listen-only mode, but if you need to ask a question or you want some more information, just hit the chat and we'll monitor that. And if there's anything that we can answer as we go, we will. And we just flip forward to the next slide there. Um, before we get started, we, we do our uh, introduction to SolidCAD. Some of you may have already seen this if you've watched the other two parts of the series. But for those who haven't, this is um, what we do as SolidCAD. And what we do ultimately is assist clients in making the most of their investment in technology. So, you know, helping people optimize a workflow, connecting things together, making it all work is really what we do. And you can see here there's design, manage, share. Those are some of the key elements to that in being able to optimize the technology that you're using and make sure you get the most out of it. If we flip forward to the next slide, we will see some of the services that we have. And there's a number here, some of them are manufacturing, some of them are civil. So these are not all just AEC related. Um, we do span out into other verticals beyond that. And we have quite a number of things. I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but if you want more information, our website, you can click on these icons on our website. You'll be able to go in and learn more about any one of these um, services that we provide. And if we go forward to the next slide, these are the products that we have. Um, if you look at the top left, Autodesk, certainly, you know, we're a platinum partner for Autodesk in Canada. And we have a lot of tools that complement the Autodesk platform. So if you look at things like CTC, scanning capabilities, and some of these other items, you know, they're all um, supporting that Autodesk technology stack. But we do have other products that we represent. So again, if you want any more information on those, hop onto our website, solicad.ca. And the last slide here for now is going to be about today. So the agenda you can read here, but again, it is all about Plan Grid today. And Plan Grid's real benefit is its mobility. It's you know, it was designed to be used in the field. It was designed with the site people in mind first, uh, before anything else. So that ease of use in terms of being out in the field, not being sitting in an office or uh, somewhere where you can connect to, to things easily. That's what it's all about. It's about the size of the screen, which is going to be more of a handheld device, not sitting at a computer. The, uh, the three key topics there, you can see the mobility or mobile collaboration tasks and field reporting. Uh, with that, Luke, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to turn off my webcam so I don't distract anybody. And We'll come back to that last slide at the end, but yeah, Luke, it's all yours today. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. And hey, everybody, thanks for coming to the webinar today on Plan Grid. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, uh, my name is Luke Hester. I'm a technical solutions executive over at Autodesk and part of an organization inside of Autodesk called Autodesk Construction Solutions. And uh, as you may know, Plan Grid was acquired by Autodesk about 18 to 20 months ago and is now part of a portfolio referred to as the Autodesk Construction Cloud. You can see that here up on the website. I uh, just figured I would, I would point you guys towards our resources page so that after this webinar, you have any sort of questions. Just come on over to plangrid.com, click on the support link under resources, and uh, there's really in-depth walkthroughs, click by click of everything that we're gonna cover today and more. Uh, so with that said, I'm gonna switch over my tab into a live project. Uh, and you can see grayed out in the background, I'm, I'm part of a number of projects, but really just to show you what the steps are to create a brand new project in PlanGrid, uh, I've gone to the website, logged in, and clicked on this green button here to start a, a brand new project. So I've just gone in and, and named my project, which is a required field. We can go and we can put specific information, like our project address, 
what the status of our project is. Maybe it's under construction, uh, but we do have the ability to specify this as well as some project dates. And then really the next step is to just go ahead and create this project. And, and what's really great about this process is it's, it's really just a two-step process. So I'm gonna switch over to a project that's already built out for this demonstration purposes. And those two steps really are just to upload your sheets. You can see here in this, in this demo environment, I've got 161 sheets that are uploaded. Uh, and then just adding your team members. So it's just a matter of adding your sheets, adding your team members, and then you're really off to the races. It can be something that you set up within, you know, 15, 20 minutes to a, to an hour, depending on how many, how many sheets you're trying to set up. So really here in the web browser is just you know, my starting point where I'm gonna do my initial project setup. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over into my iPad from for a mobile demonstration of PlanGrid, because as Andrew mentioned, it's a PlanGrid's a, a mobile field tool that was built for mobile field users. That's really where uh, the product was was focused. So I'm switching over to my iPad right now, but just keep in mind that uh, there are applications for PlanGrid on iOS, Android. Uh, we have a native Windows application that can be downloaded uh, to your, your desktop computer or your laptop computer in a Windows environment. Some people like that experience, uh, but it allows you to work local on your computer as well. In addition, the, the mobile applications on iOS and Android have on and offline functionality. So just keep in mind that everything that I'm gonna be doing today in this mobile demonstration uh, can be done without access to the internet. So if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection or if you don't have access to a 3G network or a 4G network, uh, then you still can do all of your local changes here on the device. It'll cache those changes to your device. And then once you hit a, a connect, connectivity environment, it'll upload those changes and uh, push those changes out to all of your other users. So just for some navigation, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm in the sheets section of plan grid. We refer to this as the grid view. Uh, we also have a document section, which we can kind of think of as storage for any other type of document that's not a sheet. So that could be video files, that could be 360 degree photos, uh, Excel files, Revit files. Uh, we can really use this as our, our place to store any other documents that aren't drawings. And we can really just utilize an unlimited storage there. And then anything that is stored in that document section can also be linked to specific locations on our sheets, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit here. Uh, we also have our tasks view, which is we'll go through that tool uh, briefly. And this is just a list format. And then we'll also cover some of the field report functionality here as well. So for now, we're going to start here in the grid view. And we're just assuming that we've already uploaded all of our sheets. Uh, to the plan grid system via a web browser or the, or the desktop application. And now it really becomes uh, accessing these drawings in the field. And we can see here that I have many drawings here, uh, 161 sheets to be exact. And there's a couple of things that are happening to these PDFs when I'm uploading them to the plan grid system. The first thing is uh, the drawing names and, and titles are being automatically extracted with OCR technology. That's object character recognition. It's just scanning through all of the text in the PDF and then it's actually pulling out that drawing name, that drawing number and auto populating that so that no one has to manually type this out. Uh, the second thing that's happening upon upload is that all of, all of the text inside of the body of each sheet and the drawing titles and numbers are becoming fully searchable. And I can go ahead and I can search across my entire drawing set with this uh, global search here. So this is like a Google search of your entire sheet set. I can pick a door uh, keyword here but more importantly, maybe something like a part number. I can search across all 161 sheets in this particular project, and it's gonna to return to me where it found this keyword in the drawing number or title, as well as if I scroll down to the second section here, you can see that in the body of these sheets, 38 sheets to be exact, uh, the word door is found. And, and then if I click into this sheet, it's gonna further highlight exactly where in the sheet. You can see the yellow highlight over here on the right. Can see that this is exactly where on on the sheet that that door uh, word appears. While we're talking about the things that are happening when you upload drawings to Plan Grid, uh, I'm gonna actually zoom in a little fast and just kind of spin around the drawing just to show you how it's very responsive. There's no latency, there's no lag, there's no pixelation. I'm not sitting here waiting for any spinning wheels. Uh, my drawings are immediately viewable, and that's because upon upload, they're they are pre-rendered and then they're stored in plan grid, so you're never gonna have to wait for access to a drawing when you're in a hurry out in the field. Um, and then last, 
these detail and section elevation callouts are automatically detected by that OCR technology, uh, along with machine learning to really reference these detail callouts with the index sheet or the, the drawing name list on the cover page uh, to be able to automatically link. And so if I tap on one of these detail callouts, for example, here, it's going to automatically show me that there's a live link that no one had to manually do. And then just with one more tap, I can just quickly jump to that sheet. And you can see that uh, the, the, the keyword door has persisted here. It's actually occurred. The word door occurs in multiple locations on this sheet as well. So I'll just zoom in just to show you uh, where that's located. And then it's also picking up other detail callouts. You can see here, uh, here's another live hyperlink uh, to another sheet. So I can very easily jump to uh, different sheets, jump to different details. And this kind of replaces carrying around a paper set of drawings and, and thumbing back to uh, to and from detail call-out sheets back to your main page. So that's just a quick uh, navigational uh, tip for you so that you can find all the drawings that you're looking for when trying to navigate your drawing set. Now, if I'm looking to go back to some of my previously reviewed pages, I can click on this clock icon in the upper right-hand corner and I can see all my recently viewed pages. So I can go back one step or I can go back two steps or I can go all the way back to that original drawing that I, that I clicked into uh, when I first searched that word door. So it's very easy to find uh, where I last was, as well as click on these automatically hyperlinked sheets to find any of the details or sections or elevations that I need to refer to. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this search word and I'm gonna come back out to our grid view. Uh, another thing that's really useful for finding the drawings that you're looking for when you're out in the field is something called tags. Now this, this upper right-hand corner, this little funnel looking icon, uh, this is how we're gonna access our filters. So if I scroll down and I look at my project tags, for example, here, these are all uh, project tags that are that are specific to the type of drawing. So you'll notice I have an architectural tag, for example, and if I click here, it's gonna filter down to all of the sheets that this architectural tag applies to. So it's sorting out everything else that's not an architectural sheet. And it's quickly just showing me that there's 45 sheets in this drawing set that have an architectural tag. And Plan Grid's actually smart enough to apply and look at that, that drawing prefix, that PA or A-101, for example, it's already recognizing that as an architectural sheet and applying that, that, that project tag for you. Uh, I can also use multiple tags. Now, if I wanted to filter down to all my architectural details, I would just activate that uh, additional detail tag, which is gonna show me that I now have 15 uh, drawings in this set that are architectural that are also detail sheets. I can take that one step further and. Uh, filter down to just the eight sheets that are of the exterior. And then I can quickly see it in my grid view that I'm only looking at the sheets that apply to this filter. So that's just another way to really find the drawings that you're looking for when you're maybe out in the field or uh, on a job site where you just really don't have the time to go back to a job trailer to look at a physical set of prints or um, just need to have access to this stuff in real time. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn this filtering off for now. And what I'm going to do next is we're going to go into an actual sheet. So we're going to go down into this drawing here, this E3.00. And you can see up here at the top, uh, I know exactly what sheet I'm looking at because it's, it's displayed in large text at the top of the screen. Uh, and then I can also see that you know, this is that E3.00 uh, sheet, the power floor plan at the ground level. So you'll, you'll first notice that there's a lot going on on the sheet. Um, and that these are all different types of annotations and markups and communication and collaboration tools that, that I can use to communicate with my team. And they're all updated in real time. So if I make a markup here or I make some sort of annotation, uh, for example, if I put a, an arrow here, you'll, you'll notice that it's a bright red color. Now, if I wanna share this to the team, I just go ahead and tap on it and then publish it to the project. So now there's a clear indication that the greater project team has access to this markup. But the first thing I really wanna show you is, is, is how easy it is to clean this drawing up. So I'm gonna click on this filter again, and there's just a very simple two clicks. I can clear everything. And now I don't have to look at all of the markups of my entire team, and I can get a clear look at the drawing and see exactly what's going on. So that's just a, an added uh, visibility setting. I can clear these filters. I can also just take a look at all of my tasks, which we'll go through in a second here. Or, or I can even go take this one step further and, and show all of my tasks that are in a specific status. Like, for example, if I want to exception manage all of my outstanding open issues here, I can easily do that uh, with a couple clicks. So let's talk a little bit about the annotations here. I'm going to clear all my filters so we can see everything. 
Uh, what I have here going from the top down here is a multi-select tool. So I have the ability to select uh, individual markups here, or I can go ahead and I can draw a line through multiple shapes here. So this is just a nice way to have a multi-select option where I can group uh, or publish things in bulk. Next up is our, our cloud tool here. So just a, a nice way to, to add a visual indication that I'm referring to a specific area. Also an arrow tools, uh, a free form pen tool. So I can go ahead and I can hand write on here. And again, for example, all of these markups I just made are only visible to myself. And if I need to publish those three markups, I'll just multi-select them and then publish those to the project. So as you can see, the interface is very familiar, uh, very easy to use, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, and then just moving down here, we also have uh, things like highlighter tools. So I have a highlight here, maybe I need to highlight an, an area uh, here just to call some attention. Let's, let's undo that real quick. Uh, I can just go ahead and, and make a highlight. I can also change my color. So if I need this to be a yellow highlight, I can go ahead and change that color. We also have text boxes, uh, shape tools, some basic shape tools here. And then we also have our task tool, which we'll, which we'll cover next. And then a hyperlinking tool, which will allow us to tie documents to physical locations of, on the drawing. And then measurements and pictures. So for the purpose of this demonstration, let's talk a little bit about the actual task tool. As you can see, I have my color selected. Let's change this over to maybe a blue color so we can tell which task we're gonna drop here. Now, if I pull out this task tool, you'll see that there are already uh, tasks populated here in my list, but I can also on the fly just create a brand new task here, uh, for example, and title this whatever I need to. So that becomes immediately available to me. But for example here, let's just pull a general task out of the tray here and go ahead and drop it on a, on a physical location on the drawing. So the first thing I want to do is, is I'm going to use this task to communicate with another party. So the first thing I really want to do is publish this so it becomes uh, visible to my entire team. And then I can go through all of the different fields and fill this information out. You can see I can, I can track these tasks through uh, four different statuses of open and review, pending and closed. So we'll leave this one open for now. And then the next step really would be to assign this out to someone. So for, for this demonstration, I'll assign this to myself, but we can also add what's called a watcher. And this is like a CC on an email. This basically just adds visibility of this task to other team members. And you can even see here that I've set up a group that designates that all of my field members on this project, and that's six members, are going to be part of this group. And I'm going to go ahead and add them as a watcher. So now everyone else that's a field user will also see this task when they open up their version of Planning Grid as well. I can go ahead and I can specify a location. So I can pull uh, from a list here, or I can add a brand new location just by clicking on this Add button. We'll go ahead and just add the cafeteria as the location here for an example. And then I can start setting up information like when this when this task was started. I'll go ahead and set today as the date. And maybe I have about a week or so to have this completed. So I'll set this up for maybe June 30th. And then the system is smart enough to notice that if this date of June 30th passes and this task has not been updated, it'll actually highlight it in red, indicating to the, to the, to the user that who's been assigned this task that this task is overdue. It'll also send email reminders for overdue tasks for all your users as well. Now, next, we can also specify a specific list that this task is associated with. So here's some examples. I have a site walk. I have some individual users have created their own task lists. I have damage, deliveries, maybe some design items. Maybe I'm communicating back to my design team, for example, here. So it's very easy to add another layer of, of sortability. Maybe this is a punch list issue. So we'll just add it to this punch list. Uh, list for now. But additionally, we've also added a root cause field. So you can imagine finding deficiencies in the field, identifying those issues and communicating with team members via this task that we're creating just now. But then down the road, if, if maybe a field user has, has decided that, you know what, this was a design change that caused this issue. I'm going to actually tag this as such so that I can see what actually caused the, uh, the issue. So additionally, I could go ahead and I can put in a description here adding further context to communicate to my other field users. And then I can even communicate bi-directionally uh, here in the comments field. You'll notice that I have a little icon of a person here, which will allow me to use an app mention similar to any social media platform, where I can actually talk to another, another user here. I'll just app mention myself, uh, but then I can also come in and say, you know, see here. And I could also pull a document with this paper clip 
and pull in a document from uh, my document section of Planner Grid and maybe uh, put in a PDF here. So I'll go ahead and post that, which will then put that into the comments field. You can see that there's an active comment. And now I can have other users coming into this, uh, accessing that PDF that I've tied. They have access to this information here. Uh, and then they can just have a bi-directional conversation back and forth. So someone else could actually respond back. So just an example of how to utilize the comments on a specific task. And then just finishing this out, I also have the ability to add photos and videos uh, up to a two minute video here. Uh, I could take a photo live in real time. So I'll just, I'll just do that real quick here. I'll take a, a, a new photo of something live here. Maybe I have some wet paint going on here and I wanna indicate. Now there's two different options when I have my camera active. I can see that I have just a regular photo here but I always recommend using this one right here, which will allow me to add an annotation to the photo. So we'll go ahead and we'll snap that live photo. And then it's also giving me a color picker where I can maybe change my color to blue here and then just say, you know, this is, this is the issue here. Uh, I wanna add further clarity. So we'll get, go ahead and save that photo and it's gonna actually add this reference here to the task. Uh, I can go ahead and click into that photo and I can even relabel it. So clicking into the photos uh, details, I could go ahead and say, you know, this is a wet paint sign, for example, here, and we'll just add that. And you can see here that it's automatically capturing uh, the user who's taken this photo and the date that it was taken on, and additionally, the date that it was added. So if this photo was taken previously and then added after the fact, uh, I would have the different uh, fields here where I could tell that it was taken on a different date than it was added to the plan grid environment. Now, additionally, it does also capture uh, GPS data. So uh, caveat there is you do have to have connectivity. So I'm attached to Wi-Fi right now. So you can you can see that I have the ability to actually capture this information. And and, and then when we go back to our, our uh, web version of Plan Grid, I can I can view all of the photos taken globally in my project in a map view. This is very often very useful for things like underground utilities, for example. Uh, there's a project actually going on uh, outside of my apartment right now where they're digging up water mains. And uh, they could absolutely use Plan Grid to capture photos along that water main so that down the road, if there's any sort of repair or damage that needs to be taken care of, uh, this information could be captured simply by kind of walking that excavation, capturing photos, and then in turn, uh, capturing this GPS data. So pretty useful. Uh, and again, just very easy to capture this data uh, with a mobile application. So just to finish out the, the fields here in the task, uh, we could designate any sort of cost impact that arises from a, a particular uh, task as well as a, a schedule impact. So I could designate maybe maybe an amount here uh, of $1,000 just for an example here. Uh, and then maybe there was a, a delay of seven days just for an example here. Now last, you know, God forbid you need this for any sort of litigation purposes. Uh, but if I go into the history, I have a full record of what happened on this task, including time, date, and user stamps of when this was initially created. So you can see here, I created this uh, at 1.18 p.m. Uh, and then all the way back to if anything was added, uh, anything field members were added as watchers here, you can see where I added it to a particular list. And then in turn, if I was to change this, this uh, status to maybe closed, for example, that would also show up in this history. So just a nice record keeping mechanism uh, for us to keep track of when things change on on the project, and that really that really uh, finishes out what what the task tool is required for uh, as as far as form creation when we're filling out these fields. Uh, but next, I want to show you just really quick to finish out the field uh, the field application of tasks. If I come back out to the grid view and I switch over to the list view of my tasks, which is which is really nice if I'm coming in fresh to a project and I haven't actually been on site. Uh, maybe I just want to get a general idea of what's going on. I can I can go through all of the tasks globally across all my sheets in a list format. Now I can come in and I can filter these and see maybe all of the all of all of the tasks that are open, which will filter down my my list very easily here. So we'll go ahead and clear the we'll clear these, and let's just jump into that task that we just closed out in the demo. You can see that it opens up that same familiar fields here, you can see all of the information. And then if I need to navigate back to where that is on a sheet, you can see that it's automatically linked right here. So I just tap here, say go to the sheet, 
and it's going to automatically navigate me, zoom in and open up that task that we just created before. So that's pretty much a, a high level overview of the tasks tool. Uh, what I want to talk about next before we just jump into the field reports is I'm just going to finish out some of these uh, tools here on the right. We have this hyperlinking tool, which will allow me to uh, just draw a basic shape on my drawing. So for example, we'll just pick the same area. And what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to either create a manual link to another sheet in the set, or it's going to allow me to tie a document from uh, the document section that we covered earlier in the demonstration. So let's just say I had that same PDF that we were talking about. Um, and you can see here, this is a, just a list of all of my documents from the document section. Maybe I needed to just actually put this specifications document here right on the drawing. I can go ahead and hit publish. Now my greater project team has access to this particular document. So I'll go ahead and I can flip through this. I can also use a, a global search here. I have the ability to search through, maybe uh, we'll just say projector here. So you can see that it's, it's, it's actually searching through the entire document here for all of those keywords. So just a really nice, quick way to find the information that you're looking for, uh, you know, tying specific information to the relevant parts of the drawing. Uh, and I can also pull up any related documents here as well. So that's just a high level overview of the tasks tool and just generally getting around plan grid from a navigational standpoint. Uh, the last thing I really wanna dive into is the field reports. Now, for the initial setup of field reports, I would recommend doing that on the, on the web or the desktop version of the application. So I'm actually just gonna switch back over to the web view here and uh, slide over to a new tab here where we're in field reports on the web. So again, we're just on Plan Grid's website and I'm in the same project under field reports. And when I'm creating my new field reports from Plan Grid, I have the ability to go ahead and build out a, a brand new form in our form builder. Uh, but very often people have their own, uh, their own PDF forms. So we do have the ability to specify a PDF that has its own smart fields. So any form fillable PDF will do. And then we have the ability to upload this to the plan grid environment and then actually go ahead and assign these out. Now I've already actually set this up for the purposes of the demonstration. Um, so I'm gonna slide back over to the mobile application, but just know that the initial setup of your field reports would be done by someone in the back office, uh, setting up and uploading all of their forms and then assigning the relevant people out in the field who are gonna need to be able, be able to access these forms. And now if I come back over to my mobile device, uh, I'm in again field reports here. And now I have a couple different forms that are uploaded. So for example, maybe I'm out in the field and I have to do this, this checklist. So I'll go ahead and turn my iPad sideways now since this is a, probably how I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill out this report. I can go ahead and, and go into the form itself. I can pinch to zoom in really quickly. You can see that maybe there's some hard hats. Yep, everybody looks good. They have their ear protection, they have their dust masks. Uh, but you know, you can actually go through and do this checklist, fill out this information on the mobile device, come down, fill out any relevant comments from the day's work. And then I can go ahead and fill out my name here. We'll just fill in this information really quick. And then I can also save my signatures and sign it. So at this point, when you fill out a, a form fillable PDF in the field, I can now save this form and it'll automatically be submitted back up to someone that's designated as the reviewer. Now scrolling down, I, I do have the ability to also add any, any, any photos. So again, if I had that, that live photo that I needed to take here, I could go ahead and take that picture, go ahead and take that picture of the wet paint. And then I can add any of these tasks that we just created in our mobile demonstration. So maybe we wanna add this general task along with a couple other tasks here that we created throughout the day. We're gonna also add those to our field report. So this is just a nice way to be able to build out a dynamic field report. I can also add documents or snapshots. And then even the next day, if I come in and I have to fill out the same report, I go ahead and use the previous day's report as a starting point. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and we'll preview this PDF and we'll let that generate uh, just for a moment here. But just keep in mind that this is a mobile solution. So building out your, your field forms and standardizing those forms across your organization and across your projects is really gonna allow for you to standardize that data inflow into your company. So one of the most powerful things that really comes out of digitizing your forms is having that, that standard data coming in from your field team, no matter who it is that's filling out this information, they can also 
just push this information up in the organization, which will then allow you to really look across your projects and identify things that are happening that shouldn't be happening. And then in turn, also identifying things that are maybe, maybe they're process improvements and you see something that's really good happening on one project and you wanna, you wanna emulate that on another project. This just allows you to, to take that information in real time and bring that, bring that up in the organization for, for visibility. So switching back over the, to the web here, um, I just want to pull up a live field report here. It looks like this one's still generating. So just so everybody can see what a report looks like, I'll go ahead and, and look at one of my older reports here. Uh, actually, it's just generated. So let's switch back over. So back over to the iPad. Uh, this is our, our field report. It's already got a cover page automatically generated as well. And then if I swipe through the different uh, pages, you can see that it's uh, filled out all of the information, and then also I've added those, those tasks to this field report. So guys, that concludes uh, the demonstration of PlanGrid from, from both the field and the, the, the mobile and the office perspective. And uh, we'll kick it back over to Andrew and to just open it up for general questions. Yeah, thanks very much, Luke. That was a great job. And uh, in record time, I think, to cover all that material, that was really great. Um, I haven't seen any product questions come by yet, um, so I think you may have just been extremely thorough and knocked everything out. We'll just give it a minute here, see if anyone types into the chat, if there are any questions. Otherwise, uh, Yeah, I do not see any questions coming through the chat. So if you don't mind just pulling up that last slide, Luke, um, that I have, sure. I just want to get I just want to get it in the recording. So if people are looking for more information, our website, solidcad.ca, you can see that it's the end of my email address, phone number and email are there. If you have more questions about plan grid, the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Remember, this is a three part series. So that included assemble systems. Um, it also included Building Connected and Plan Grid. So any of those topics, uh, feel free to get in touch or anything else if you need it. And additionally, go and check out our events page. We are often hosting events. Uh, in fact, later this week, we have our first virtual Revit pub night. So I don't know if that means we all get to have a pint at home and, and talk, but uh, certainly it's exciting because we're now going to be able to include every region of Canada in our Revit pub night, whereas traditionally it's it's held at a, you know, at a location within a city. So yeah, check out our events page at uh, solidcat.ca. Again, Luke, thanks so much for your help. Really appreciate everything you put into this. Uh, you've done the past two sessions. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll end it. And thanks everyone for attending. Hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, thanks Luke. Thanks, Andrew.